Hi, I'm Angela from Uranda and in this video I will show you how to use our improved depth of field. So let's jump right into this topic. You can activate the depth of field in the effects tab. For those who are not familiar with DOF, every lens in real life has depth of field. And this means the area where the objects are sharp. With increasing distance from this area, the objects get more blurry. One of the most important settings for the depth of field is the focal length of the camera, f-stop, aperture and the distance between the camera and the objects. With colored bokeh textures, you can even change the entire look of your renderings, like this fake chromatic aberration. I will show you how to use these settings now. DOF settings to default. Switch back to my camera that I already set up and set this to default as well. Then open the render settings, the effects tab and activate depth of field. Go to the camera tag. First of all look for the area that you want to have in focus. The focus distance picker is right here on the right side. You can also set the focus distance in the viewport directly or set it up manually. Sometimes it helps to set the f-stop value very low because the lower the values, the clearer visible is the top effect. Now back to the effects settings. There are a couple of important settings. The sample count defines the quality of the DOF. There are three presets, low, medium and high. But you also can use any kind of sample count by using custom. The limit of blur size is really important. It is some kind of limiter of the maximum blurriness the DOF can achieve and has a huge impact on your performance. So keep this value as low as possible. If you still want to have more blur, you just need to further decrease the f-stop value. Increase the scale or the limit blur size value. The next setting, the scale, is a blur multiplier and this globally affects the DOF settings. This is very useful when your scene is not created in real units or if you want to get a specific look. With the focus range, you can determine the region in which everything looks sharp in the camera view. Moving on to the bokeh. For this I will make some glowing reflective cubes in the background visible to show you the effect better. You can do that by bringing up the limit blur size too. The bokeh refers to the appearance of the light that is seen within the blurred parts of the render. You can switch between the fast and the high quality one. With the fast bokeh, you can save performance while working or even use it as a stylized drawn background effect. Next is gamma. With this value you can emphasize highlights. 1.0 corresponds to the physically accurate amount. Here you can change your bokeh shape. You can choose between polygon and texture. Now you can see that the default values of polygon form a pentagon for the bokeh shape. With the blades you can affect the shape of the bokeh. As you can see, 3 forms a triangle, 4 a square and if you want a circular round shape just bring up the blade value. With the angle you can change the rotation. With the anisotropy value, you can stretch the bokeh effect vertically and horizontally. With the roundness, you can achieve bokeh shapes with rounded edges. You can achieve for example a donut torus shape if you increase the value of the inner radius. If you choose texture, you can simply upload your own bokeh texture. You can upload any texture you like, different shapes, gradients, the possibilities are endless. I will show you some examples and you can emphasize the effect with the limit blur size value. Have fun creating your own textures but you can also head over to our website and download some bokeh textures. So that's all for this video. I hope you liked it and have fun with our new improved depth of field. Thanks for watching.